am going to work on my December art journal again today. Yesterday I did the Christmas tree angel. Wasn't this a fun page? This sparkle up here, I don't think I told you, was an old necklace. And here's the chain part of the necklace coming down as streamers off of the angel's dress. This was just a fun page to do. Now, a part of what I did yesterday was this Pareidolia page. I got the sketch in there, and I want to finish it up today. And I want to write chapter 6. And I want to do prompt 5, which was by Shannon. Shannon Pratt, the art junkie here on YouTube, and that was to use a penguin on your page. Well, I don't have very many penguins either, but I was getting ready to throw out some junk mail, and look, there's a Dollar Tree penguin here. It's an ad, but I thought, you know, this goes in with my story that I'm going to write, so I might alter this a bit. We'll see. I also have some Tim Holtz, a scrap of paper. You can see that I've been using it for to test out my fine line markers here, it looks like. But I like all these little 5 cent, 15 cent, 30 cent circles on the back of here. And I'm going to use them probably to embellish some of this paper. I don't want to get away from... This is coffee-stained paper. Oh, look. Oh, look. <laughs> this pareidolia is getting to me. Look. What do I see here? I see... Mmm. I see Maisie again. I might save this back for... Oh, and I see more here. I might save this sheet back and only write on these two pages today. I'll try not to. <laughs> I'll try to ignore any pareidolia promptings that I see on these pages because I do want to ch write chapter six. So that's what I'm going to work on. I'm going to work on this first and I'll just explain what this is going to be. Maisie is in a snowball fight. So you're going to, <laughs> that's what this is. Doesn't this look like snowballs are being tossed here? And she's got one here. And this is a part of her little scarf and cap with the snowball. I might put a little snowball on top of her head too. You know, a little puffy knit cap on top of her head. But Maisie is in a snowball fight with brother. So you'll hear about that when I write chapter six. So I'm going to get started, and you can watch. Chapter 6 Snowballs and Christmas Shopping The day finally came when Granny said that she would take Macy Christmas shopping. Mother, father, and brother were off to do a little of their own Christmas shopping. But Granny always took Macy to the dollar store where Macy found many things that she could buy. As they were heading out to the car, all of a sudden, Brother started throwing snowballs at Macy. Well, a little battle of the snowball kind ensued. And Macy and Granny pommeled Brother until he ran for the safety in the car and Mother, Father, and Brother drove away to do their Christmas shopping. When Granny and Macy got to the dollar store, there were some people standing outside the door ringing bells in front of a little red bucket. Granny reached into her purse and pulled out some coins and asked Macy if she would like to put them in the bucket. Why, Granny? To help other little boys and girls who do not have grannies to take them Christmas shopping, smiled Granny. Now, Macy clung just a little bit tighter to the brown bag that she was carrying. Remember in our chapter about the night before Thanksgiving supper and the big jumbo peanut butter jar? 
Macy had a special talent for finding all sorts of little tracers just about everywhere she went, and her peanut butter jar was now filled with pennies and pennies and pennies. Macy did not know exactly how many pennies she had or how many pennies that it would take to buy all the gifts that she needed, but she thought that she had just enough. Macy followed Granny up one aisle of the dollar store and down the other. Macy found Christmas gifts for everyone on her list except for what she wanted to get for Granny. A coin purse with sparkle on it for mother, gloves for father. Now, for brother, she thought about giving him earplugs because he complained about her singing all the time. But then she saw a little drum. He might like that so that he can beat on it and make his own noise. Just as she was reaching for the drum, a little hand went right in front of her and grabbed onto the drum that she wanted for her brother. She turned to see a little boy with blonde hair and big, sad blue eyes. Then she heard, put that back, the little boy's mother said, and she took the drum and put it back on the shelf. The little boy with the big, sad blue eyes didn't say a word, didn't make a sound. But Macy thought that she saw tears rolling down his face as they walked away. Macy stood quiet for a moment, and then she put both the earplugs and the drum that she wanted for her brother in her basket. Macy looked and looked and looked, but she just could not find what she wanted to get for her granny. They must not sell them here. Finally, she decided on a big round red candle. Granny did like candles at Christmas, especially the big round red ones. When it was time to check out at the cashier, Macy dumped the entire contents of her jumbo peanut butter jar on the counter. I think I have enough pennies. Well, I must have a hundred. I've been saving them for a very long time. Well, the clerk looked at the pile of change on the counter, moved it around a little, and said, Little girl, you don't have a hundred pennies at all. I think that you must have a hundred dimes. What does that mean? Macy asked. Well, that means that you have ten times as much as a dollar. Well, Macy could hardly believe it. She got back five dollars, and in addition to all the gifts that she bought for brother, for mother, and for granny. Then Macy looked up, and right next to them in line was the little boy with the big sad blue eyes and his mother. Macy just could not help herself. She did something that caused the cashier, Granny, and the little boy's mother to just look on in surprise. Macy reached into her bag for the little toy drum and walked up to the little boy and said, My brother said he doesn't want it. Would you like to have it? The little boy smiled. The cashier smiled. And the little boy's mother smiled. On the way out of the store, Macy stopped at the red kettle and reached into her bag, opened the big jumbo peanut butter jar, and pulled out five shiny dimes and dropped them into the red bucket. Then Granny smiled. 